Lost media is a really interesting topic, and the only reason why I don't tackle it more often is that it's so popular that most subjects have already been done to death. I've made two videos on the subject, and though I bring up genuine pieces of lost media, they're also clearly very facetious. I spend a lot of time poking fun at how everyone covers the same lost media topics, how they do very little research, uh, they try to sound overly mysterious or dramatic, and generally just try to rip off the vibe of Blame It on Jorge. However, people have been begging me to cover the topic again, and instead of making a giant joke out of it, I decided to actually do a deep dive and uncover never-before-discussed lost media. The topic I decided to look into was one that was personally interesting to me, and doesn't seem to have been covered by anyone on the English-speaking side of the internet. And so I present to you my journey of unearthing a lost Shotaro Ishinomori anime. Don Kiko was an anime that aired on Fuji TV from September of 1967 to January of 1968. The series consisted of 21 episodes, though many sources reported as 42, due to the series using the format of two 11-minute shows similar to American cartoons. The show follows a young boy named Don Kiko who moves to the city from the country, living in a train car and having misadventures with his friends Don Don, Gombe, and Ayame. The anime was based on a gag manga by Shotaro Ishinomori, with the main character drawing inspiration from the classic Don Quixote, as well as the American comic character Dennis the Menace, though the Dennis the Menace influence may not have been Shotaro Ishinomori's intention. You see, the series that aired before Don Kiko was a show called Kaze no Harris, about a young boy who has a reputation as a delinquent and is often getting in trouble with his friends. The series was very popular and ran for 70 episodes. However, P Productions, who wanted to extend the show, were forced to end it early due to backlash from parents that the main character was a bad influence. Don Kiko's design has a lot of similarities with the younger brother of the main character, Kunimatsu, so I suspect that Ishinomori specifically designed Don Kiko to look similarly. If the character looks familiar to you, you might have noticed his design was recycled for one of the villains in the Cyborg 009 vs. Devilman OVA, which is the most exposure the character has had since the 60s. As of today, the series is mostly lost due to never receiving a home video release. P Productions was more well known for their tokusatsu output, having created series like Ambassador Magma, Spectre Man, and Lion Maru, all of which were pretty popular and even saw some English localization. What are you called, huh? My name is Goldar. I've come to help the people of Earth. Give me strength. The art of shape-shifting. I am Lion Maru! <laughs> As a result, while their tokusatsu saw VHS releases, their anime were mostly ignored, though the openings to these anime were included in their Pete Productions theme song compilation tapes, and it's because of these tapes that we still have the opening to Don Kiko to this day, as well as several other anime that were slash are lost, and we'll get to that in a second. Since the series aired in the 60s, the likelihood of someone having a home recording is almost impossible. However, over the years, a few pieces of the show have surfaced. Although we don't have footage for most episodes, the audio for several episodes were released on FlexiDisc. FlexiDisc were small records that had the audio for full anime episodes, with the jacket of the record usually having a description of what's happening, so you can follow along as you listen. These were a very popular way to revisit anime at home in the 60s and 70s, mostly because it was the only economical way to do it. For a while, it seemed like this is the best we would ever get. That was until a lead surfaced, and it was one that kind of baffled people. In 2018, an episode surfaced on a VHS tape.
Unfortunately, the collector who recovered this tape was unwilling to share more than the opening and a few screenshots. However, he did provide information on how an episode from 1967 made its way to a recorded VHS tape. This episode of Don Kiko actually aired in the 70s on an episode of 60 Minute Manga Festival. This was a variety show that aired episodes of classic anime for seven weeks in a row, and according to this tape, one of those weeks contained Don Kiko. This is strange because the schedule for 60 Minute Manga Festival is easily available online, and Don Kiko doesn't appear anywhere in the roster. My initial thought was that Don Kiko was a part of episode 4 which focused on gag manga and included an episode of the Tatsunoko anime Dokuchin, which I believed may have been a misreporting of Don Kiko. However, according to the archivist, Don Kiko was actually included in episode 5, which had a theme of hot-blooded youths and contained an episode of Kurunai Sanchiro and Zero Sen Hayato. Zero Sen Hayato was actually made by P Productions, and according to the archivist, the episode on the tape was edited down so that an 8 minute episode of Don Kiko could still fit within the 60 minute time slot. Around the same time, the archivist also shared a screenshot which I believe is from that same episode he received, which featured Don Kiko talking to a girl who bears a striking resemblance to Sarutobi Ekchan. Ekchan is a character from a gag manga also created by Shotaro Ishinomori, and this screenshot actually means that Don Kiko would be the first time we'd see Ekchan in animation, predating her appearance in her own Toei anime in 1971. He also pointed out that the opening appears to be different from the one included on the P Productions compilation tape, as it seems to contain an opening shot of Don Don riding a roller coaster that isn't in the compilation version, as well as having karaoke lyrics on the bottom of the screen. Even if the wider public wasn't able to get to see this episode, this was a good sign, because it proved one thing. When Don Kiko finished airing, it wasn't burned in a dumpster or lost in a warehouse. Someone was holding on to it. Now we just needed to find out who. And so we reached the most logical conclusion. The person most likely to have Don Kiko was the son of the founder of P Productions. Neon Genesis Evangelion composer Shiro Sagisu. This video is sponsored by Sakura Ko and Tokyo Treat. Sakura Ko is a monthly subscription box packed with up to 20 traditional and authentic artisan Japanese snacks, including Japanese tea and one special piece of Japanese tableware with every box. For example, in this box, I received a pair of Ichimatsu chopsticks. Sakura Co. partners with local snack makers to continue to share Japanese culture and traditions passed down over 100 years. And this box is packed with traditional Japanese snacks similar to what you'd find in an authentic Japanese tea ceremony. The theme for this box is Okinawa Retreat, so Sakura Co. is teaming up with Ogimi Village in Okinawa. They have the highest life expectancy in the world, and the snacks included are made from ingredients actually grown there. Tokyo Treat offers up to 20 of the latest seasonal Japanese snacks, with Tokyo Treat focusing specifically on contemporary Japanese confections. And this box is full of limited edition summer-themed treats like the Chupa Chups Strawberry Cream Soda and the Watermelon Seed Candy. Sakura Ko and Tokyo Treat want to share Japanese culture through the medium of snacking, so if you're interested in pop Japanese snacks, Tokyo Treat is the way to go. On the other hand, if you're more interested in traditional Japanese snacks, Sakura Ko is the box for you. If you don't recognize any of the snacks in the box, then don't worry, because each box comes with a booklet that details the names and significance of each snack inside. That being said, I personally think it's more fun to just invite a bunch of friends over and eat them right out of the box with no idea what you're tasting. We all love the brown sugar karinto, which we called Japanese chocolate pretzels, as well as the Tana Fukuru sugar cookies and Okinawa sugar bread, which were all part of the Sakura Ko box. From the Tokyo Treat Box, our favorites were the Pure Potato Truffle and Rock Salt Chips, and the Summer Surprise Kit Kats. I'm also looking forward to trying the Chiltanuki Yakisoba, but I learned when we filmed our last box opening that it isn't a good idea to eat noodles after you've spent hours eating cookies and chips, so I'm saving this to have for lunch later this week. If you want to try any of these boxes, click the link in the description and use code MERCURY for a discount on your first order. And once again, thank you to Sakura Ko and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring this video. P Productions was founded in 1960 by Tomio Sagisu and made their television debut with Zero Sen Hayato in 1964. That same year, Osamu Tezuka reached out to P Productions to discuss producing an anime based on his manga Big X. P Productions was too small to produce two anime concurrently though, and Tezuka would instead subcontract the work to Tokyo Movie Shinsha, now known as TMS. A few years later, Tezuka's anime Wonder 3 would face a ratings battle with the live-action TV series Ultra Q, the predecessor to what would become Tsuburaya's Ultraman series, and Tezuka would once again reach out to P Productions to collaborate on a series to compete with Tsuburaya. 
The result of this collaboration was Ambassador Magma, a tokusatsu that would garner a large following premiering two weeks before Ultraman and being the first TV tokusatsu to air in color. P Productions continued to produce tokusatsu throughout the 70s, but by 1979 had pretty much ceased television production. In 1983, they opened Video Shop P Pro, where they sold videos and held screenings of their work. Though Don Kiko wasn't listed as one of their available tapes, it was listed in their soft order list, which was a service where you could directly order specific episodes of P Production shows, and P Productions would send you a custom VHS tape of a film to video transfer. These were very expensive, and the likelihood that someone spent that much money for what would have been considered an outdated kids anime is not very likely. Luckily for me, the lost status surrounding many of P Productions' works led to various collectors seeking them out over the years. And from 2018 to 2020, a group of collectors would congregate on Twitter to search for both Don Kiko and Chibiko Kaiju Yadaman. The anime Kaze no Harris was also considered lost for some time, but was found in the early 2000s. And when I say lost, I mean actually lost, as in even P Productions didn't know what happened to it. The official DVDs don't give many details as to what happened, but there's an urban legend in Japan that the film reels were found in a yakitori restaurant. Among the group of collectors, they first tried to see if anyone had ordered a Don Kiko tape from P Productions. They did manage to get in contact with someone who had tried to use the service. However, they were told that when they tried to order Don Kiko, they were told by P Productions that they couldn't do a film to video transfer because P Productions had already sent the film reels back to Ishimori Productions. Ishimori Productions was Shotaro Ishinomori's production company and assisted in adaptations of his manga. Other users chimed in saying that this makes sense because when Mushi Pro went under, the film reels for Sabu and Ichi's Detective Tales were also sent back to Ishimori Productions. Around that same time, another lead came up saying that Chibiko Kaiju Yanaman and Don Kiko were both aired on the Japanese network Kids Station in the 90s, meaning that the chances of finding Yadamon and Don Kiko on VHS tapes is way higher than we initially thought. To confirm this claim, an archivist did go through the TV guide for Kids Station. Luckily for me, the series that are in black and white are labeled as B and W, and we did manage to confirm that Chibiko Kaiju Yadamon is on the list. However, Don Kiko wasn't but people did reply saying that Kid Station didn't always follow the schedule as it was reported. Regardless, the biggest takeaway from all this is that Don Kiko seems to have been preserved, even if it isn't available to be viewed by the general public. A couple episodes showing up here and there on VHS is cool and all, but what we really want is a DVD release of the complete series. Many 60s anime have received DVD releases, but these are usually reserved for anniversaries to drum up hype. Don Kiko's 50th anniversary was in 2017, so the next opportunity would be on the 55th anniversary, which would be this year. If this search taught me anything, it's that I'm not the only person in the world who cares about finding Don Kiko. But in the meantime, we'll just have to settle for having the ending theme, which previously wasn't on the internet until now.